start with you. Alright guys, we're going to get started here with Coach Sharon Moore. We're going to start with Joe on the right. What do you see out of this uh, Ohio State offense? What do you think makes them really good? Yeah, they're electric. They're, they're balanced. Um, Travion obviously gives them the ability to run the football very effectively. Uh, O-line's doing a really good job gelling at the right time. And then, def and then um, obviously, skill player-wise with Marvin and uh, Mecca and Kate Stover and those guys, they've got guys that can make plays on the outside lanes and feel like the quarterback's playing his best football. So uh, definitely a challenge that our defense is going to be uh, up for. Uh, was Clay back there? Clay, did you have a question? You want to yeah, just uh, the last two games, uh, you guys dominated. Are you expecting a similar result? Um, what do you think of their outcome? Yeah, I mean, I think defensively they're really good. Uh, I think offensively they're really good. I think for us, it's just focusing on what we can control right now, uh, which is the preparation into this game mentally, physically, and uh, see what the outcome that is after that. On the left, John. Coach, how do you think that the staff establishes a balance between Jim getting across what he wants done in situations and at the same time trusting you guys in the moment on game day to, to make those calls? Yeah, I think the preparation um, that we've had up to this point in training camp and spring ball all through, you know, all through the season has really prepped us for these moments to think like Coach does and, and at the same time make the decisions that we think he would he'd want and obviously situationally being aware of what's going on in the game. So. Uh, we lean on each other all heavily in all those situations to make the right call. By the left, Tom. Uh, Jim, Jim talked about empowering you guys to be able to coach in these moments without him on Saturdays. This is probably a different situation, though. Do you anticipate him having any extra conversations with you about how to handle the outside noise in the game, the pressures of this game, or, or do you anticipate going to him and asking him about that? Yeah, I mean, I probably might probably be the one. He's. I mean, he trusts us and, and has prepared us for these moments. Um, so it'll be probably more so me than anything than him coming to me. Um, but I think our team, is, it's all about the players and how they prepare this week and how they mentally attack it and uh, looking forward to it. On the left, Andrew. Jerome, how, how has your life changed these last two weeks? I imagine for you, maybe for more people, you're the one doing the interview. Yeah, a lot more text messages. No. <laughs> A lot more Facebook messages, which I don't really get on Facebook. So I see them pop up on my phone and just like, okay. Um, probably that more than anything. But right other than that, I'm the same person. I'm doing the same things. Uh, when I go home, I still get yelled at. So it's all, it's all good. Um, and my kids still run the house. So uh, for me, it's, you know, the seeing, you know, in more interviews, more things, that's the biggest thing for me than managing the game situations during the during the game. But other than that, everything's been the same. On the right, Angelique. Um should be good to go. Uh we'll see further and we'll check with the doctors as we go as far as all three. Yep. On the left, Michael. Sure, I think after the Maryland game you mentioned how not much about your Day to day during the week changes a lot because Jim is allowed to be here. Mm -hmm. so I'm curious, is there anything about your time management or things that has had to change Monday through Friday just because you're going to be responsible for more on Saturday? Uh, probably just thinking more so the situations and as I plan. You know, obviously when you're calling plays, you're thinking about that as well anyway, so that helps um, versus being on the defense side of the ball. So, but just thinking about all those situations more so if we're on defense and we're at the end of the half or things like that. Um, so just putting those situations in my head more th more so times than I would uh, if I, if coach was on the field. In the left, Aaron. How is JJ physically, and how much did maybe the lift? How much does that impact maybe the way you guys are used in the left? Injury? Yeah, he's feeling good. Uh, I actually talked to him today and yesterday. I felt the best he's felt. So um, just excited to get to get to work. Tony. <clears throat> and speak, speaking of JJ, uh, it's been a few weeks since he's scored a touchdown on Ohio State number one statistically. Mm -hmm. past defense. A, a couple other teams, you guys have probably been number one in a, in a category and you guys have, have gone through that. I guess what's the key to getting JJ on track or sort of bucking that trend? Uh, yeah, just get him in rhythm and um, put a good plan together for him. Uh, so just excited for the plan to get continue to get installed and, and execute it. What does getting, I guess, getting in rhythm look like? Why, why do you think maybe he hasn't gotten in? Yeah, I think we just got to do a really good job of, of the plan and executing the plan in all phases, protection, 
route running, uh, completions, all that. So uh, we'll get there for sure. On the right, well, Joe. Sharon, we all talk about the outside stuff and Michigan versus everybody and the motivation you guys might have. How much do you guys use what's going on to bind you and motivate you? I think the kids just, they just do it anyway. They all have a chip on their shoulder, uh, sometimes a boulder. And uh, nothing we talk about internally constantly. We don't harp on. We're just trying to focus on uh, beating the team that we're about to play. In the left here, what do you, what do you think that those kids have proven about what's being said about them over the last few weeks on the field? And what can they prove this weekend? They're, they're 11 and 0, number three team in the country, and uh, they're just out to prove that they're the best team in the country. On the right, Ryan. Blake talked about football this season as championship or bust. I mean, how much do you think? Uh, how much do you think the long-term future of the program, as well as the short-term future, obviously, is at stake? Uh, I mean, we're just, again, we're just going to focus on this game. We're not going to try to talk about what's going on in the future or anything like that and just attack today. Um, that's how our kids have gone about their business every week. We haven't looked forward to anything else, and we're going to try to make this the best Monday we've had. On the left there, Chris. You watched the film of Maryland. What are some of the things that you want to clean up offensively going into this game? Yeah, just more detail. Um, which I think that it's crazy. All the guys were already in yesterday, so um, they've already started cleaning that stuff up. Just detail on little things and finishing. Um, this the first half was really good, um, except for the last drive, and we drove down the field and had an unfortunate play that he hadn't had since Bowling Green. Um, so just sustaining that same uh, consistency that we had in the first half and the second half, and I think we're excited to ready to do that. Coach on game day that you did a few months ago? Uh, a lot more interviews. Um, and then, uh, I mean, probably that was the interviews post, pre, uh, having Dave around as much as he can. I learned that Dave is immac he's phenomenal. I already knew that he was good at his job, but I mean, talk about a guy that's on point at every second. Um, but besides that, I mean, the, the general feel for me, I'm just trying to do my part to help the team win uh, as the game goes on. Yeah, biggest thing is probably the game management stuff. Um, and then talking to the refs, where I usually don't talk to the ref at all. Uh, and coach wants me to make sure that I'm doing it. So um, that's the that's probably the biggest thing for me. Usually I have no association with the refs at all besides pregame. I might know somebody or anything like that. But that's probably the biggest biggest adjustment. Front here, Dennis. You want to get the, the prep, but could you set the table a little bit, give us a couple of words about what this game would mean for uh, Michigan to win it in 23 for the program? Yeah, I mean, we all know what it means. Um, it's the game. It's the one you, you practice, you play for, you work for all year. So we all know the stakes, and that will give us a chance to go um, to repeat on the Big Ten title. So um, the, the words, the prep, that'll come out a little bit more later on down the week. I try to keep it on a low boil this week because I can get pretty high really fast. So um, the kids are as prepared mentally and physically as they'll ever be um, to get ready for this week. So just excited to get with them today. On the left, Michael. Sure. What do you sense is the, the confidence level right now for a guy like Carson? And as an O-line coach, what do you say to a guy who maybe had a couple games that didn't go the way you wanted to try and get him back for you know the biggest game you have? Yeah, I mean, I think it just in general in football, you're going to have bad plays. You play against really good players. So um, we always talk about Fido, forget it, and drive on. And uh, if you don't do that as a football player, it'll harp you, regardless of your position, quarterback, running back, O-line, tight end, defense. Um, all those things happen. So you got to make sure you push on forward because that's that's going to happen. So now you got to refocus and, and get ready to go. we got time for a few more. We're going to go with Charlie. Sharon, I guess Maryland, you went for it on a couple of fourth and shorts, and you went for two after the <coughs> touchdown. Um, do you expect kind of similarly aggressive play calling if those situations arrive against Ohio State, or do they kind of force you to be a little bit more conservative? Uh, I guess we'll see as we get into the flow of the game and as we prepare through the week. So uh, we'll see what happens. And also, when you were talking about justification, the reasoning behind that, you mentioned some of it was field goal distance. 
Where do you trust James Turner from? Where is he making it from consistently in practice? Yeah, I think that all depends on it. Also, the wind and different aspects of the weather and what's going on. So, um, just trust our special teams unit and trust Coach Jay and all the decisions. So, whenever those situations occur, we'll definitely refer back to that. Connor, um, you said Jim wanted you to talk to the refs more. Did he give you any advice as to, to how to do that? Any no, I don't, and I'm not going to talk to him like how, how he talks to him. Um, <laughs> He's earned, he can say whatever he wants to the refs. Um, I just try to communicate um, and just get an understanding for what's going on and what they're calling, what they're seeing, and, and do what's best for our team and help our team as much as I can. Is that difficult to kind of find that balance live and without much? No, no, it's not. I um, found myself trying to pull back a little bit and not be too aggressive um, because you want, to, you want them to like you. Uh, you want to be on your side. So, But it was just all about just communication. Are you guys at and calibrating the balance between wild buck playmaker JJ and yeah. precise read the defense? Just let him be him. Let him be him. Um, when you got a really good player, uh, you can't put the handcuffs on him. You got to let him let him play. Uh, let him. You know he made the mistake and he learned from it and he won't make it again. Um, so that'll be huge for us as we go down this stretch. Last question, Angelique. Sure, you've seen some pretty good defenses down the, the road. I mean Purdue and, and the Penn State. Yeah, I mean, besides our defense, I think they're the, they're the best one. Obviously, I think Penn State was up there. I think Purdue was up there. Um, but the stats speak for themselves, and you see it on film. Uh, they're good at every position. They're deep at every position. Um, so it's going to be something we got to prepare for mentally and physically. Uh, so we're excited for it.